You see that? They're making money off the young man. Oh, look at you, boy. One of these people actually told me they made thousands of dollars off of me. I was like, well, <laughs> can I at least get a poster? <laughs> born in Texas, and I kept stopping in New Orleans because it was the only place where I could still be, you know, open-minded and fun and, and energetic about life, but I didn't have to stop at 2 o'clock in the morning or stay inside the bar with my drink or all the things that are kind of typical American culture stuff, you know? <laughs> Here we are. This is some of uh, this morning's rain you see right here. <laughs> see, that's the thing about New Orleans, you know. The water tends to hang around a little while, you know. In every trunk in New Orleans, you can find topsoil, <laughs> see? Because <laughs> it corrodes <laughs> so bad. Nah. Not every trunk. All right, y'all ready? Yeah. Come on. Pull up, pull up. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, New Orleans? If you're not from here, I would like to welcome y'all to my wonderful city of New Orleans right now, yo. Who that? Just in case anybody didn't know, my name is Trumbo and Shorty from the Tremé neighborhood, yo. Still playing together? Yeah, yeah, forever. I gotta give him a check now. <laughs> <laughs> Where that's from? Barrett. Yeah. Look at Barrett. Oh, Barrett over there? It's, it's in my name. You want me to just give you the cash? Yeah. You go. Just give me the cash. Thank you. That's why I used to play with Tuba Fats and James and everyone as a kid. Four or five years old, yeah. Two days, probably Saturday and Sunday, we made about $400 a piece in ones. Wow. Each weekend. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to have watched him come from, you know, from a kid playing in the streets, playing out here. This is our stage right here. That's where I learned most of my early music. Didn't you do a little tap dancing too around here? Did no, you, I you, ah, you never did that. <laughs> did you? I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I did, did a little tap dancing in the band. <laughs> He's mixing the brass band thing with rock, with funk, with mm -hmm. jazz, with a little Neville with all that, you know. There. And it's and it's cool. Ivan and his family was the people that put the funk into my life. <laughs> yeah, his family helped create the sound that we know as New Orleans. And for him to be a part of that, I've got a chance to be able to be around the family and Ivan, just being next to him, watching him play, I'm able to soak some of that in and put that with my band and different things. New Orleans, it actually, and it's kind of true, like uh, certain neighborhoods kind of breed more certain types of little variations on the New Orleans thing. Like you got a lot of drummers yeah. that were from, probably from uptown. You know, you yeah. got a lot of horn players from the Six Wall, from the yeah. Treme area. Right. You know, you got a lot of cats who play guitar from the Seven Wall. Yeah. You know, yeah, so it's really like that. And then yeah. you got some cats that just play whatever they're trying to play yeah. all over. But it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of a mix and match, you know. And so we all learn from each other. All right, man. Man, I'll see you, man. I'll see you, man. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. right, right. Hello. I used to go to that church right there. Right now, we're in Treme. So I 
I, I, I was baptized at that church. I used to live in this house, 13, 15, and then later on, we lived in this house. Right there. You ever heard of uh, James Black? He used to live in the house next door. The drummer, James Black. Yeah. That's one thing about New Orleans. In every block, there's a famous individual. You know, somebody that may have influenced you in one way or another, or just a neighborhood band, you know. And the music has always been, you know, the driving force in New Orleans culture, you know, and it will always be. So this is the house. So we used to rehearse in this back room back here. Yeah, you can probably go up on the steps and see it. Yeah, we used to rehearse right in here. I mean, we've been playing together now. This, actually, this is our 36th year playing together as the Dirty Dozen. <laughs> great. We listened to their records over and over and over again when we first started the Rebirth. The Dirty Dozen had a strong influence on me and the Rebirth right in the beginning, right about 1982. I used to teach school. I used to teach Kermit and a lot of the other guys in the Rebirth. When they were little kids, you know, they got the Rebirth together and what really allowed them to mature was they started subbing for us at the glass house. We would go to the glass house uptown and watch the Dirty Dozen play every Monday night. And I started to tap the lady on the shoulder that owns the place and say, hey, I have a brass band. Can my brass band play here? Five or six years or something, then we started traveling. And then it got to the point where the tour started getting longer and longer. We couldn't get back on Mondays, so they hired the Rebirth to substitute for us. Yeah. That's the New Orleans tradition, yeah. one band yeah. after, you know, yeah. Yeah. all the yeah. way up. Yeah, we all we all intertwine, you know? It's like a real network of, of musicians and all like that. Look, look at Trombone yeah. Shorty. Yeah. He yeah. was this big playing with us, you yeah. know, in the Just street. hanging around. Yeah, hanging around. Nice. He couldn't even reach, uh, like, 7th, yeah. 6th, Seven. and 5th. He could yeah, only he go to 4th position. Yeah. You know, and now he's Trombone, trombone Shorty, you yeah. know? Now it's his time. He's yeah. popular. All right, baby, how are you feeling? Nice Good, to see you. Again. Hi, how are you? Oh, this is how you work. Oh, this is how you mix. Oh, this is how you work. Oh, I need to see if you can drop a hot potato stop. Hey, 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 what are you doing out here? Go. Come on. Bobo. Hi, 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 hi. You love this face and this waist, don't you? You love yeah, this man. face and this waist, don't you? You love it when my booty go, but I'm the thumb, thumb, put up on the thumb. Bounce music is very much about what it sounds like. Bodies bouncing up and down over and over and over again. And that's, yeah, that's the energy. The DJs who created Bounce in 1987, Manny Fresh, DJ Irv, um, these guys made it for the dancers. Not very many people sit around and just listen to Bounce music. As soon as it comes on, everybody's you know, jumping up and girls are grabbing things. and. That's, it happens really fast that way. It's the most popular music in the city now. I just want to use my, like, you know, everything I... Let's see what he got. 
crab in it, chicken in it, hot sausage, uh, shrimps, you know, smoked sausage, some stew meat somewhere in there, you know. Don't that look good? So I'm put that in there and let it finish. For the guys that are... 10 minutes, no, not 10. How about another five? I don't have no rice. Rice right in there, potato rice. Oh, we just put it in there with it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, I got you. In this container? No, uh-uh. Well, what kind of rice you got there? Brown rice. <laughs> All right. We we'll just put it in there with this guy to get that like one minute or less. Let's take it with this one. Everything sound all right out there? Hey, hey, Come on, talk to us. Hey, everything sound all right out there? Put them up like this. Come on, put them up, 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 put them up. Talk about it. 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 What's going on, y'all? Talk about it. Do it. Talk about it. Do it. What you say now? Talk about it. Do it. Talk about it. Do it. Talk about 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 do it. 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 At the oh, that was wonderful. That, that's yeah, one of the, my highlights. Rock God. Yeah. Swear to God. There we go. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you very much. This is the Louisiana Music Factory. It's, it's the only music store that we have that sells real CDs. It's one of the only places we have left. Maybe there's three. But this is the place where we, where we sell most of our New Orleans music. And you can find music here that you won't find on the internet. You won't find it on uh, all, online, no other stores. It's okay. direct with the audience. Yeah, I'm the only one in this town. Everybody want to put me down. I'm lonesome, can't you see? Yeah, I'm the only man in this town. It's Kermit Ruffins in there. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, we party! Party! Position us down. The world famous right? Kermit Ruffin. Almost. Give me uh, 10 more years. I'm going to show these plan, things. You plan, you And yours truly, Trombone Shorty. Uh, I'm sorry, yours truly, Kermit Ruffin. I knew his mom before he was born. Me and his mom and his dad was good friends. And his mom and dad hired my Rebirth Brass Band on our first second line parade, uh, maybe 15 years before Trombone Shorty was born. <laughs> then I saw his mom stomach sticking out, and there's Trombone Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Let's 
move some stuff around my crappy van and we'll go. You can't fuck with me, woke, and you never will. Cause I make more money than you ever will. So if you see me do anything wrong, we don't have we don't have a lot of laws here when it comes to driving. You're sort of free to do what you want to do. Keep it fresh. New Orleans is uh, all about the neighborhood bar. The bar that I play at every Saturday is two blocks this way, right down this street. And you can see the street has like a really pretty, like tr really pretty trees down the middle and everything. And they're trying to move, they're trying to shut down all the bars right here so that they can make a nice like avenue out of this that people will, white people will want to live in, you know. Right now it's pretty violent and kind of crazy in that, you know, in that area. All right, here we are. Try to keep it out of the rain. You can't fuck with me, woke, and you never will. Cause I make uh -oh. more money than you ever oh, will. I put the burner to the head you like, let her live. You get beside yourself, dog. You better chill. Life's too short for you to wig out. I wanna buy music. You got new bounce CDs or no? Uh-huh. Well hook me up. My name is Jesse James. You know what I'm saying? I'm a part of the nothing but fire family. You all ain't nothing but fire right here. Probably one of the only uh, record labels still standing after Katrina. They sell shoes, they sell music. This is a good place to get bounce CDs. It's a good place to get local hip hop CDs, rap CDs, all kinds of stuff. Commercial rap to bounce to R and B, you name it. And this is Chris Young, and he manages different artists, multiple artists. Whatever you you got the money, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you can pay, I'm coming. Yes, as indeed. It's, it's so hard to get that repetition of being the best rapper in New Orleans because there's too many of them. Mm -hmm. The New Orleans culture oh, and the rappers, it's so much pure talent and a lot of it will go unnoticed because they can't get their, their, their structure together business-wise. Some people don't want to have anything to do with anything about the industry. Right. And they just happen to be one of the people sitting on the porch with an amazing amount of talent. Right. But it's trying to convince them that, you know, that getting involved in your career is important and mm -hmm. taking like all this, doing the really hard work to make that happen. New Orleans just doesn't really work like that. Like talent alone right. is enough for some people, just having the talent. And mm -hmm. it's hard to like navigate who wants to, who wants to work that hard. You know, somebody like Lil Wayne, you know, there's a reason why he's on a, a 150 new songs a year right, because he right, right. never stops working. New Orleans people may be talented enough to actually do that, but not all of them want to work that hard and trying right, to figure out who right, can right. is the hard part. Nigga said it money long like Amtrak. But put the money on the wood where your grand's at. If your boy's on bubble, where your band's at? I'm the hundred grand man, bitch, a man back. You can't fuck with me, woke. Well, yeah, I got, I got a new record that I got in there right now. It's exclusive. Nobody never heard it. Yeah. I just recorded this record last night by Black in my studio. I'm Seth Four Five. I'm CEO of Number Five Records. Sometimes I come up with the chorus. Sometimes he come up with a chorus. Uh, you know. Uh, I just do the, you know, the verses and all that, but we, we make nothing but fire music. That's why I would name it nothing but fire. Everything wanted to be fire in a sense of, you know, good. Like, you know, fire is that good. It's hot. It's hot, hot. He do a lot of the groundwork, don't get me wrong, because, you know, he, I call him the plug, you know what I'm saying? His face is like a coupon, you know what I'm saying? You can't fuck with me, woke, and you never will, because I make more money than you ever will. I put the burner to a head. This is WWZF in New Orleans. Possibility of a shower or a thunderstorm. <laughs> It was
was really magical to be able to be in this neighborhood. This is where it all started, right here at this house. Kermit Ruffins lived around there. My brother, my family, Reaper Brass Band lived around the corner on St. Anne Street. That's where they started, around the corner. It's a musical neighborhood. That's what it was. Everybody's musical here, and it was all musicians. My cousin Terrence Andrews, he lived over there with the Little Rascals Brass Band. So it was, it was always music around. See, even Tuba Fats is still here with us. The one and only Tuba Fats. Hey, Mr. Jerry. How you doing? How you been doing? I've been all right. Trombone was bigger than you. Yep. Yep. Love you. love you too. Thank you, Mr. Jerry. I appreciate it. But see that? Every Wednesday night, we got the Treme Brass Band. They perform here. And that's Uncle Benny on the snare drum, and we just lost, we just lost the great Uncle Lionel with the Treme Brass Band on the bass drum. We just lost him. This looking is, good, Shorty, looking good, baby. Thank you, baby, thank you. <laughs> this is the only place we come every Wednesday. Trump on Charlie Hood. That's right. <laughs> we used to set up right here hmm. with the barbecue grill, feed the whole neighborhood, and free music all night, right here. We used to all play and just jam out, huh, Will? Really? Yeah, man. Like a dog. Where you at, Uncle? You all right? Yeah. You're looking good, babe. How y'all folks doing? This whole neighborhood would be booming. Two, yeah. three hundred people on the street. It's crazy, like a movie scene. Musicians, Shannon Powell, Kermit Ruffin, Reap Bird Brethren, everything. And now you look at it and it's empty. There's nothing. Where you at, K9? This guy, he sleeps in a cemetery. That's where he lives, down the street in the cemetery. He sleeps on the grave. Well, Katrina, the big storm we had in 2005 in August, it, uh, everybody, we were so used to living a certain way and just everything was all right for us. And one day with the storm, it just wiped everything out. And when we got back to town, you had a lot of price gouging and some of the people that was here that was living in different houses and different things that was able to afford things, they just couldn't do it. It didn't come back naturally. Yeah. There's stories of people like this one girl, Ephraim, though. I forgot her name. You know, she went outside on the porch after Katrina passed. The sun was coming out. Everything looked it real nice. And then all of a sudden, she looked up the street and she seen water coming. You know, by the time she went inside her house to tell her husband, the water was as high as the poach. By the time they both went back in to grab some things, they couldn't get out, though. They were stepping in the water. And, and within, within less than an hour, the water had to rose to 25 feet. They were, they, were, they were chopping a hole through the roof to save themselves. They had to go up through the roof of their house. And she said while she was out on the roof, the next day, that's when the frogs and bugs and all of that snakes trying to get out of the water come on the house. So she had to knock them down and all like that, protect herself because she was being infested with, with, with all kind of different animals that survived it, as well as insects and, and frogs and stuff like that, snakes. So it was bad all around here. The lake had to move that far. See for my neighbor, 
He was underwater. He was underwater, and he's not coming back. He's in Baton Rouge. He decided to swim in a different ocean. You know, this guy's not back. He's not coming back. That house was torn down, and now it's just, you know, junk. Water was here. See my neighbor here. He started to repair, but he's not. Hey, Chrissy. Come here, Chrissy. Come here. She, she blind. Up, up, up. Go sit down. I was on tour with Lenny Kravitz, and I came home, and two or three days of being home, we get this big storm warning, and I made it out of town a few hours before it actually touched down. I had to go back to tour, so it was a weird thing for me because we had family members that we couldn't catch or who we couldn't get to, and uh, we couldn't reach them, and I had to go back on tour and finish what we were doing. For well, Katrina, the water got up to the to that uh, the top of that roof right there. Yeah. So everything downstairs was wiped out, flooded. All the souvenirs that I had collected from all over the world, er everything that was downstairs wiped out. And after the storm, I had a a, a trailer, FEMA trailer, here uh, for about uh, at least two years. A more, you know, FEMA trailer. You know, it was there, it was uncomfortable, but that's what it was. Uh, my neighbor's here. That house used to be uh, lower, but they had it elevated. But when the storm came, the, the water was over the roof. You know, when it when it was, you know, uh, before it was elevated. There's yeah. a lot of homes that sit down. They're elevated now. Elevated because yeah. That's the nature of New Orleans. We're like Venice now. Sooner or later, you know, yeah. we're going to have to find a way to coexist with the water right next to us. Yeah. You know, every house, because yeah. it comes. No, it, it will come, yeah. you know. Even after the storm, I never even considered leaving. Yeah. You know, I never wanted to go anywhere. I never wanted to be anywhere else. I always knew, you know, that I was coming back and repairing and, move, you know, coming back home. You know, before the storm, there were people that never left the ninth ward. Mm. So Katrina was a big... Uh, Difference. Yeah. Katrina forced people out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Took them away. Now, for me, I never thought I would ever want to leave New Orleans. But it was easy for me, because the only thing that was keeping me here after all of all, all my relatives and loved ones went somewhere else was the van. And Baton Rouge is just, what, 60 miles away? There's a bus that, that takes you back and forth for $10, $5 each way. You know, there were so many perks to just stay right there in Baton Rouge. Less drama, I don't have to worry about if I got a boat or not, if somebody stole my boat. I ain't got to worry about, you know, sleeping one night and start floating while I'm sleeping, you know? Uh, you know but I can still cook the same food <laughs> there. Uh. And now, you know, this. Over here, you know, for Louis Armstrong, you hear he uh, was at the Milne Boys' home. This is where he learned to play. It was a, a boys' home. Oh, boys. Yeah. Uh, the bad boys. Yeah. yeah. Like the, they used to call it the waifs. We call this 928 underneath the interstate. This is where. This is where I, all of all the people hang out. Where you at, man? That's me as a kid. Yeah. And that's my brother. That's James right there.
Mason. This is Mason. My grandson. DJ Paul. I'm like the neighborhood watch guy. We keep trouble off the block. You heard me? Yeah, Paul's you know keeping I mean? trouble off yeah. the block. Yeah, so I am the male of the block. And I know everybody from that street to this street. That's what make a community. What's up, big dog? All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I even know the UPS people. <laughs> Ain't that something? <laughs> I know it too. Yeah, you know it too. I'm a punk under pressure. We'll be finished for my money at the dresser. No, he's okay. He's just not, you know. Come here. Come here. Come here H. Buddy. Okay, don't let him bite your fingers, right? Just like, you know, put it right close to his mouth and just drop it in. If you hold it over his head, he'll lift his head up. <laughs> you all like you. <laughs> Nobody likes that turkey. 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 You can rap? Yeah. Let's hear it. Rap, rap. Dust your, fa dust your face off. Look at those stacks. I got my Rolex, my fam stacks. Call in, you don't know about that. Fucking on them tracks and wax. Your little boy, so get back, back on my money. Take your girlfriend, buy a nice jewelry. Hold it. And it's my girl. And I roll the world. And I drive her crazy. All around the world. Alan, I only have this many records now. I've gotten rid of almost everything that I had before. We've made a couple of vinyl records for Bounce Artists. Yeah, this is the big Frida Ass Everywhere 12 inch that I made with, um, with a punk record label out of Austin. Uh, punk is a slang term for gay kid, which makes this whole thing even more ironic that we work with a punk label and that gay kids are called punks. The rappers that I work with here in New Orleans, when they play in a black club, it's 1,500 people and only 10% of them are gay. You know, gay or transgendered rappers being mainstream cultural success stories in this city, in their own city, that's I, unheard of. I don't know of anything like that. Just a second. It'll end in a second. There we go. <laughs> Bounce music pretty much only exists on MP3s now. There's no, there are no records, there are no tapes. It's just you go to the corner store. They don't even have record stores. You go to the, the corner store and there's a guy in the parking lot and he pops his trunk open and you buy CDs from him. And the artists themselves never get any money from it and the producers of the music never see any money from it and that's the way that it works. People just make it because they love it and they just keep going.
Galactic and the Neville Brothers and, and play at certain times of the year. Ben probably met me when I was three or four years old in Treme. He spent a great amount of time in Treme with the Little Rascals Brass Band, who was a bunch of my cousins and family members. And, uh, and me and Ben have been playing together since I was born, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I've been lucky. <laughs> Remember that, that time when he was Oh, yeah. Kid? How could you not forget? such an honor for me because when you're able to play House of Blues and uh, sell out, it's, it's also another level that you've reached in the city of New Orleans. So it's, it's a blessing to be able to do that. It's, it's a great place because uh, it, it brings in a lot of uh, national acts, but we, we do most of our dirty work at Tipitina's. Tipitina's is a little bit off the beaten path. This is in the French Quarter. Yeah. So maybe this place might draw, the clientele might draw a little more from the tourist economy, right. whereas Tipitina's is more of a destination. Yeah. You're not going to just walk by Tipitina's. Yeah. Right. You have to go. For Galactic, it's our home club. It's really just about the only place we play in New Orleans. Yeah. Galactic, you know, you just got to see them live. And Ben is always really innovative, you know, and, uh, and music and the show and how things flow. It's just one of those amazing things that you have to see live and I steal a lot from them too. <laughs> I just don't have the money to do the lights yet. <laughs>
We're at Fusions on AP2 Row, which is uh, in the 7th Ward in New Orleans. Tonight it's uh, drag performances uh, by drag performers from out of town and, and in New Orleans, and then uh, followed up by Bounce Night. You know what you want in the back of the I think it's a little crazy here. There's definitely been a lot of violence here in the past and, you know, a lot of parking lot fights and stuff like that. But it's uh, calmed down a little bit. And I never stay until the very end, which is when all that shit goes down, you know. If you leave, like, just before it's over, usually everything's okay. Hey, Nikki. Welcome to the end of your career and the beginning of mine, bitch. Hello. I'm Nikki. Oh! Oh, can I introduce him? <laughs> <laughs> Nikki to be the rapper I work with. Hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I see pussy don't now. Let's go. I got a man to take her out. So he don't want somebody else. Let's go. Make your robbery rock up. Make your robbery rock up. Work your, work your, work your, work your. I'm really good with like tongue rules and stuff like that, like put it up, put it up, and bussy bop, put it up, bussy bop, put it up, and things like that. Like uh, making up sounds that are still musical, but they don't aren't necessarily words, you know. Yeah. So like using a voice as like a, just an instrument. <laughs> in a straight crowd. I didn't come out in a gay crowd. I didn't come out, you know, Why for, for gay people. Because I guess I grew up. I grew up with the heterosexuals. I didn't grow up with the gays. I grew up with the heterosexuals. You know, it's like, I grew up in a project. I'm hood, you know. And the hood liked me, you know, so. I had, I, and the hood had my back, so it's like, and when I, whatever I did, they supported me, you know. And if you play with me, they got me, you know, so. I fucked with Katie. <laughs> That's right. You gotta fuck with Katie. When I say Katie, y'all say Red Katie. basically full of gays. Like, you might as well say that the South is the capital of gaydom because <laughs> we're, like, everywhere here. We have more gays than streets. They do it now in the city. But, um, it's like, it's, it's, it's like unified to me, basically. Like, everybody, anyone could bounce right. Yeah. <laughs> New Orleans just happens to be really, really understanding. <laughs> Girls, they shake their ass, what their booties, they shake their booties, they shake their titties. Sometimes they shake their shoulders, you know. They do whatever, whatever, whatever makes them feel like, you know. It's fun, you know, it's like we grew up on it. It's like, that's all you see in New Orleans. Like, you see, it's like, I want to learn how to do this, I want to learn how to do this. Like, I want to learn how to do this, I want to learn how to do this. But it's like, and when you're trying to learn, it's like, it comes so natural. It's like, you know, you do it so good.
Is that with your boss? Where you coming from? Home. <laughs> Derek Taylor, this is my older cousin. He's the founder of the Roots of Music, a great, wonderful program that we're going to talk about in a few. And he's the world's greatest snare drummer ever in the whole history of New Orleans music. It's a compliment, though. Big compliment coming from a big cat and a little body. We grew up in a, in a musical rich neighborhood. You had no other choice but to learn music. And when you have uh, the older folks cheering you on at a young age, it has, you know, it's like making people proud of you for doing something that you want to do. So we wanted to be able to see if we can take that type of uh, system that we were taught and passed down to us to be able to help kids around the entire city, citywide. A lot of people don't realize that it took the music of New Orleans to go out there and let everybody know this is something that's going to be missing if we don't rebuild and get ourselves back together. This is something that could be gone, you know, and that's why Roots of Music is so important to preserving and, you know, uh, this culture because now we're giving back to these kids that's going to pass it on to their kids and pass it on to their friends and keep the music alive. I mean, if I save one person's life through music, my strong point, I've done my job. Make sure you stop like you're supposed to. We take all nationalities, all different kind of flavors, all different feelings, and we just put it together. And, and whatever we come up with, and that's with everything in New Orleans. I don't care what it is, from music to food to just hanging out with the fellas. <laughs> back a long way um, from the very beginning of, of the city it was a port town um, so ships coming up and down the river and through the ocean always you have a big mix of people and so I think the music just came along with that with the mix of people <laughs> We play like we live, we, we play like we dance, you know, so it's general, you hear, like you can hear a New Orleans musician all over the world, wherever it is, when you put on that record of Louis Armstrong with that trumpet, you can hear that, he has something there that none of us have ever been able to explain, you just have to be here, it, it becomes a way of life. Now it's, our industry seems to be culture music and art and food, which I think is a really nice place to have specialties. Mm -hmm. 